Coming up on Weather Underground, a multi-day severe weather threat is unfolding. See where strong storms be on that one, unless it's no. pudding or something like that. No. But, hey, welcome in, everyone. You're watching Weather Underground. I'm Mike Bettis. I'm Alex Wilson. Even if you tell me it's cocoa powder, I'm still a little suspicious. <laughs> Just a little. Something doesn't look right no. in that picture, right? And that's a color sometimes you can't trust. No, I, I hear you. Hey, <laughs> folks, uh, we've got a lot to cover for you here on the show. Just look at the forecast yep. behind us here. So we've got some pretty good storms down across the south. Mm -hmm. Some of those could become severe today, so we'll have a, a look at the radar for yeah, you. Yeah, then we've got another system for the middle and end part of the week that's going to bring the return yep. of more severe weather, or I guess just keep severe going. We're just in that pattern, yep. unfortunately, so we're going to bring you all the details on which days, time frames, the whole deal, so stick around for that. In the meantime, let's get right to Florida and show you what's going on in Orlando. Can severe weather chances, in fact, possibility not just for Orlando, but down towards Fort Myers as well. We could see a hit or miss severe storm Naples to Boca Raton up into the Big Bend area of Florida. That would include the Gainesville area, University of Florida, and a little bit of the Panhandle also in an area where we would again watch for an isolated severe storm storm. But where we think that's really going to happen, Mike, includes two major areas, Tampa and Orlando. Actually, look. No boats docked there right now. We take a peek at where the snow was falling over the last two days across the northern tier up there in the sections of Minnesota. Now a closer look at the northeast where we've got snow and rain around the Syracuse area. So through central New York, all depends on where you are, whether or not you're getting some raindrops there along I-90 west of Syracuse. North of Syracuse, up towards Oswego, even a little bit of rain mixing in. You head into parts of the Tug Hill Plateau. That's where you've got the snow. So you get that just a little bit of elevation, and now you've got some snow showers. Take a look at temperatures sitting in the mid 40s from Syracuse to Buffalo. So that I-90 quarter, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, you're likely to stay with the rain here through the afternoon. You got to go up into the north country, up into the mountains where you see the snow, snow into parts of northern Vermont and New Hampshire and even sections of Maine, but Albany at 43, Boston at 45 mean it's going to be light rain in the cards for you as we head into the early hours of your Wednesday. How about accumulations? You're wondering, right? These are the kind of events where even if you get the accumulations, they don't stick around very long. Less than an inch for many, one to three inches there into northern sections of New Hampshire. How about Bangor? We look at your forecast. Some light snow showers with you and those temperatures very marginal right around those low 30s. In fact, staying around 33 during the very early morning hours, dropping slightly below freezing as we get closer to the morning commute. So we'll watch for some slick spots, but overall, this is a pretty marginal event for a place like Bangor. Mike? All right, so we know that three some snow as well. So again, a lot like the Northeast today, we've got that mix of rain and snow across sections of the West, including Idaho and Western Montana and Nevada and into the state of California, where areas east of San Francisco are getting in on some of that rain and high elevation snow into the Sierra Nevadas. Really same story here into parts of Oregon, parts of Washington. You've got rain and snow and what you're seeing depends on where you are in relation to the mountains. There's a look at Reno again. And right along the state line where we've got the rain and snow mixed. Even some of those areas where you see the yellow indicating the more moderate rainfall, likely seeing some melting snowflakes in there. So I think truly a rain snow mix in some of these communities. Now rainfall still to come, not a lot. Thinking an inch or less for most areas, parts of Utah, parts of Idaho, getting into sections of the state of Nevada. In terms of snowfall, you can see some decent accumulations as we look at the mountains uh, east of Seattle, as we look at the Jackson Hole area. And as we look at northern sections of the state of Idaho, anywhere you see those purple colors are 5 to 8, 8 to 12 inch totals. So here we're looking at uh, the potential for a half foot to a foot of snow, but you really got to go up in elevation. Now, late week, we're going to see that snow develop along the eastern Rockies. We've got that eastern flow, so that air coming out of the east, that's going to give us that upslope flow. So we could be looking at some of those higher totals into the mountain locations. Time it out for you. Six o'clock on uh, this afternoon. I, I keep forgetting today is Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon. So this afternoon, we've got the snow around the Jackson area. Even into Salt Lake City, I think rain and snow will be an issue for you. Moving into Wednesday, that's when we get Denver in play. And again, areas to the east, the rain. Areas around and to the west of Denver get in on the snow before everybody changes over to snow into the day on Thursday before things generally begin to wind down. So a closer look at Denver. Again, four, five, six o'clock on Wednesday afternoon. Rain more likely than not around the city. We've got the mix to the south. We've got snow to the west. Eventually snow taking over for just about everybody with some light to moderate snow lingering through that Thursday morning commute. That's the one I want you to 
you know, keep in the back of your head. That could be a slower drive to work. So, Mike, we always hate to say it, but set that alarm a little bit early on yeah, Thursday. Yeah, for sure. All right, Alex, thank you. That's right. So let's talk about the end of the week rainy setup. We take a peek at Destin, Florida, where it's going to be a rain event for you. Although, you know, cold air, even all the way into sections of the southeast this past week. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. But right now, you're sitting in the mid-60s. So you're, you're really thinking spring. And you're thinking, before we know it, everybody's going to be here, right? Destin, one of those hot spots to go to in the summer. I still have never been. I feel like I'm missing out. I know I'm missing out, so I need to... Write it on my list and hopefully get going. Middle of the week, there's our upper level disturbance moving off towards the east. So this again, our overall setup, uh, Mike talking a bit about this and how we do have some differences between our forecast models. But what we know is this dip in the jet stream is going to pull that moisture up to the north. So while the models differ, the overall storm motion is going to be to the east. So we know that parts of the eastern U.S. are going to get in on that precip and that most of it will be rain. European model thinking moderate rain where you see some of those darker shades of blue. So the higher elevations through uh, West Virginia into western Pennsylvania, and especially down into parts of Virginia, some of the uh, elevations there into New York State before you get into the snowfall. Now, the USGFS model, similar, but I think overall lighter amounts of rain for a lot of the east as we go Wednesday all the way into Saturday. So let's look at the overall kind of what we're thinking right now, but no, know that this will change as we move closer to the end of the week. Thursday, the rain and storms from parts of Kansas into Oklahoma City. We'll also be watching for the threat of strong storms, severe weather for parts of Texas and Arkansas and Louisiana. And you see Dallas is in that zone. New Orleans back in play after a stormy start to the day today. Now, Friday, we've got a lot of the Gulf Coast from New Orleans all the way over to the Big Bend of Florida. Even parts of southern Alabama, southern Georgia will be spots to watch. So Albany and over towards Montgomery could see some severe storms. I think they'd be fairly isolated. I don't think we're looking at the setup for an outbreak, but by all means, if you live in these areas, know that that could be an issue. And on Friday, rain and storms all the way from parts of Kentucky and Tennessee down to the Gulf Coast. That'll move east into our Saturday with some scattered storms in the beach locations in Florida, also the beach locations in North Carolina. Mike? All right. Degrees. Beer flows like wine. Beautiful women show up, says Lloyd. Uh, Aspen, you know, you might be a, kind of a hot spot this week for everybody because it's spring break so skiers want to head out there tuesday we've got sunshine temps around 50 now afternoon rain and snow you don't like the rain with the snow you'd prefer just the snow drop to 38 on thursday with morning clouds followed by afternoon sun and then a mix of sun and clouds headed your way on Friday. Breckenridge, we look at your snow depth around 62 inches, seen about five inches over the last 72 hours. All the lifts, all 34 are open. And there at Breckenridge, we've got snow in the forecast Wednesday, Wednesday night, Thursday, still chilly. Take it to the south. I don't have a quote on Melbourne, Florida. Spring break at the beach, you don't mind. Bring it inside. College kids, I know sometimes you guys, you know, you like to do things for the TikTok, but when you hear the thunder, inside where you need to be. Rain showers, okay, you can go, you know, uh, play around mini golf out there in the rain. Do college kids play mini golf? I think so. 63 in Atlanta today with building clouds, some chances of showers later on. Orlando sitting at 78, 69 in Mobile, Alabama. Now, rip current danger is going to be high up there into the uh, Gulf Coast of the uh, panhandle of Florida today. High danger or high Rip current danger, moderate risk for much of the East Coast, but West Palm Beach down to Miami, where you may be getting in the water, high risk of rip currents there as well. We look at your Daytona Beach forecast, 80s by the end of the weekend weekend, but Mike, rain. Thank you, Gus, how you can only quote Dumb and Dumber in Christmas Vacation. That's it. <laughs> so live the only two movies you can quote. I have not been to a movie theater in seven years. I just don't like I don't like movies. They're too long. I like to I like to choose my own adventure and I'll watch like I'll binge watch seven hours of a show, but that's my choice. You're waiting for like the metaverse. I am. You can choose your own movie yeah. experience. Is yeah. that what it is? Yeah, You're sometimes just, I just feel like current society bores you, doesn't it? It's just too much. I look at a movie and it's like two hours, twenty-two minutes, and I'm like, no.
No, wow. it's too long. Wow. I need the metaverse. <laughs> no, I don't. The, oh the metaverse does not need me. No, I don't know what they need. Bend, Indiana, you are looking at Buffalo. Already a soggy picture. You know, we've seen the rain and snow moving through parts of the northeast. And then, of course, South Bend, Indiana, another spot where late week rain chances will be on the increase. So let's break down this forecast for you so you know what to expect. When to grab that umbrella, when you can maybe, you know, leave it in the car. I always leave it in the car because you don't want to be found, uh, you don't want to find yourself having left it at home, and the second you don't have it is when you really need it. Thursday, there's our area of low pressure moving into the southern plains, and that's dipping in. As we move towards the end of the week, though, that surface low that develops strengthens, and it's going to really draw some moisture into parts of the south central, parts of the southeast, even up into the Midwest and northeast. There will be enhanced instability, so we've also got to talk about a severe risk as we head towards the end of the week. So possible severe threat from places like Dallas into Arkansas into the state of Louisiana as well. Now Friday, now we have our surface low moving off to the north and east. Widespread rain and storms from the Gulf Coast all the way up into that I-95 quarter with Saturday not just rain, but also gusty winds from the Great Lakes to the coast because of that strong pressure gradient. So we've got to watch for that in addition to some rain into the start of the weekend. European model thinks light to moderate rain for most, and the GFS follows fairly similar, uh, brings the snow a little farther south, but again, for most areas, light rain. We're going to watch those model differences update you by the end of the week. But Mike, a lot of areas getting in on rain. Sure. This weekend and take a peek at some of these numbers 25 in Jackson 25 in Atlanta even Charleston the low country of South Carolina dropping into the mid 20s parts of Florida at the freezing mark that would be Tallahassee and low 40s for Orlando strawberry season well still to come on weather underground we're closely watching the West well, here at the weather channel we continue to highlight amazing women during women's history month and today we wanted to introduce you to Lucy Shepard an explorer documenting documenting her explorations in an effort to protect our planet. 